Okay, now that we know how to find the area between two graphs, let's think about making um, 3D figures. Well, what if we made 3D figures full of shapes we already knew? Let's say we made, built little bitty squares, little bitty ones for the, a small height, so that the bottom of the square is going to be the same as the height between the two functions. Okay, so as the functions get closer together, you have small squares, big, big, big squares, and they get smaller. So how could we find, well, let's take each square. How can we find the area of each square? Well, if the bottom of the square is f of x minus g of x, f of x minus g of x, and it's a square, then the height would be f of x minus g of x. So to find the area of each square, area would be f of x minus g of x times f of x minus g of x squared. And we have all these squares, big squares, small squares, so forth. And we took all of those squares and added them up, we would basically have the volume of the figure. So how could I find the volume? Well, the volume would be the integral from the endpoint oops, A to B of all of those squares and each square is side squared and the width of each square is going to be that dx. Add them all up. What if we had figures that look like this? Right triangles and we're going to add them all up. Okay, so the bottom of it is f of x minus g of x. The height is f of x minus g of x. So the area of each one, so remember area of a triangle is one half base times height. So that's going to be area is one half, the base is f of x minus g of x, and so is the height. And if we took all those little triangles and added them up, we'd have the volume of the solid. So there's the area of each of those triangles. And dx would be the width, that itty bitty width of each of those little pieces of paper. I could also write that as one half the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x squared dx. Well, we can make other figures. Gosh. Let's go with an equilateral triangle. Ooh. Oh, we got to remember how to find area of an equilateral triangle. Okay, so the base of the equilateral triangle is going to be the height between f of x and g of x. So let's see what we remember about an equilateral triangle. Well, an equilateral triangle can have 60, 60, 60 because all the sides are the same. So if I drew down the height of that triangle, this would be 60, this would be 30. So this little piece right here is going to be half of f of x minus g of x. And let's see who remembers their draw geometry. What would be this height? 30, 60, 90. So half, half root 3. So this height right here, whoop, this height would be square root of 3 divided by 2 of 
f of x minus g of x. Okay, so let's look at this triangle as a whole. Area equals one-half base. The whole base is f of x minus g of x. times the height, which we just found, square root of 3 over 2, times f of x minus g of x. Now, if we're going to be finding the volume of this solid created by all these little things, we're going to have to combine this up a little bit. Let's see. 1 half square root of 3 over 2 gives me square root of 3 over 4 f of x minus g of x times f of x minus g of x gives me f of x minus g of x squared. So how would I find the volume of that figure? Well, we're going to add them all up. The volume equals integral from a to b of square root of 3 over 4 times f of x minus g of x squared times the width of each of those pieces of paper, which would be dx. What about a semicircle? Ooh, those look really cool. So we got big semicircle, and they get smaller, and big, small. But all of them have this diameter that's f of x minus g of x. So what would be the radius? So the radius would be half of f of x minus g of x. So how do you find the area of a semicircle? Well, area, a semicircle will be half of pi r squared. So half pi, and the radius is 1 half f of x minus g of x. And then all of that's being squared. Well, that means, let's see, if I'm squaring all of that, I'm squaring the 1 half, and then I'm squaring that difference between f of x and g of x. Ooh, can clean it up even further. Half and fourth would be 1 eighth of pi. And if I found the volume of the figure created, it would be the integral from a to b of pi over 8, f of x minus g of x squared dx. Are you noticing anything that's the same every single time? Every single one of these have somewhere in them f of x minus g of x squared times the difference in our x at dx. It's just the coefficient is different depending on what figure we have. I tend to still break it down into what figure I have, but if we have this handy while we're working on our homework, we can actually use this as a guide. So, we have the region here bounded by sine pi of x, which has got to be this one, and x cubed minus 4x. So this is going to be my f of x, and this would be my g of x. Now actually, if I were working on this on a test, if I wanted to answer all these questions 
and not have to rewrite sine pi. I could actually just say let f of x be sine pi of x and g of x is x cubed minus 4x. In that way, we, you could actually just use them um, f of x minus g of x every single time. <clears throat> now let's think. Where are these intersecting? Well, if we want to just kind of remember some algebra, let's find the x-intercepts of g of x. Well, they both have an x. Oh, that's the difference of squares. So my x-intercepts are 0, negative 2, and 2. Which is nice, because now I know that this is definitely 0 and, and 2 there. So what if we make our cross-sections with all equilateral triangles? Now, if I were, were doing this and I didn't remember the formulas, I didn't have my notes handy, yeah, I would redraw these every single time. You know, this is this, and this is f minus g. This would be half. So the height would be square root of 3 over 2. I would do all of that. But we just did a lot of it. So to find the volume and its equilateral triangles, that ends up being the square root of 3 over 4 from 0 to 2 of f of x minus g of x squared dx. This one we could do by hand, but most of these questions are going to be calculator-based. So I would go into my y1. Let this be sine of pi x. And this needs to be x cubed minus 4x. And now I can do all the nitty-gritty integrals using this. Oh, I probably wanted to start this off with square root of 3 divided by 4 times the integral from 0 to 2 of y1 minus, oh, I forgot to do a parenthesis. Oh, no, hold on. I need to square that difference. So I need to back up and put, whoops, y1, insert the minus sign, alpha y2, parentheses squared. We can't forget that, dx. Four point three two one. What if they're semicircles? Well, if I was doing this on a test, I'd draw it out. This was the whole thing, f minus g. So this is half of it, and so forth. And you could come up with the equation for a volume, because you could find the area of each of these, integrate them from 0 to 2, and so forth. But we just went over how to create that, and that's pi over 8, f of x minus g of x squared dx. So I would do, maybe turn this into a fraction, pi over 8 integral 0 to 2 parentheses this time, let's remember the parentheses Minus, and I'm happy that happens on videos because you need to know that sometimes you, you start typing and you forget about a parenthesis, and they make a big, big, big difference. That's 3.918. Isosceles right triangles. Well, those were half. 
of the f of x minus f of like, f minus g times f minus g. So it's half of f of x minus g of x squared. Now that I got this set up kind of nicely, I can do some copy and pasting. I want that squared, but in front, instead of the pi over 8, I want that to be 1 over 2. 4.989. What if they were all squares? I'm adding up all these squares. Well, that's going to be side times side, 0 to 2, f of x minus g of x squared dx. Well, that's basically just that times 2, 9.978. Cross sections are rectangles whose height is twice the length of the base. Okay, so let's draw a picture. So, the base is on the graph, so that's f of x minus g of x, and it says the height is twice that. So this is 2 times f of x minus g of x. So how do we find the volume? Well, let's start with the area. The area is length times width, so f of x minus g of x times 2 f of x minus g of x, which would be 2 times f of x minus g of x squared. Oh, that makes sense. Because if this is twice as long as the base, if I split it up, I'd have two squares. Oh. Okay, so to find the volume, it'd be 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x minus g of x squared dx. Now we just found one square. So times that by 2, and I get the height of that rectangle. Oh, those come in handy. 19.957. Cross-section are rectangles whose height is one-third the base. Okay. All right, so this is f of x minus g of x, and the height is one-third of that. So the area would be those two multiplied together, which is going to be one-third of f of x minus g of x squared. That means the volume would be one-third, the integral from 0 to 2, of f of x minus g of x squared dx which would technically be one-third of that. So I'm going to go back and highlight that answer and divide by 3, and I get 3.326. We are going to be doing a lot of this um, in class, um, actually building some of these models, so you can really get a feeling for what we're doing here.